Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. Some places it's actually Thursday, but we have a very exciting special show uh, this evening. We have a gentleman who is a young hit maker, ladies and gentlemen. He's in the islands. He's written songs and performed songs such as Headshot, uh, Deal With That, and one of my favorite ones, Start, o Start Over, I really love that song as well. Uh, Mr. Ravi <laughs> B is on the Sherrod Show. We want to say uh, welcome to the Sherrod Show. Um, first of all, the Sherrod Show is brought to you by Queen Team Apparel. Queen Team Apparel has just um, has become one of our major sponsors, and we're so excited because they make the best T-shirts and wear. Look on your screen, ladies and gentlemen, you can see the Sherrod Show T-shirts that are here and available now. Actually, with the Cash App information, you can purchase the Sherrod Show T-shirt as well as the Sherrod Show wear. So be a part of the big thing, um, as well as Essence TV, the Sherrod Show is brought to you by. This is the new network for the Sherrod Show. My network, actually, where you can watch the greatest episodes, such as the Isley Brothers, Mel Carter, Michael Collier, including Robbie B on the Sherrod Show as well, <laughs> Essence TV. You don't want to miss this. Well, this gentleman that's sitting here is a huge hit maker. He has won countless awards. He is the biggest star in Trinidad, ladies and gentlemen. And he's, and I'm humbled to have his presence here on the Sherrod Show. Mr. Ravi B, how are you, sir? Hey, it's a pleasure. It's really a pleasure to be here. And um, I hope everyone who's locked on right now is having a splendid night, whether it's morning or night. But good night to you or good morning. Really appreciate you being on the show. Now, Ravi, first of all, you're a busy, busy man. You just come back from performing. Now, what was the event that you were performing at just about an, less than an hour ago? There's an event in Trinidad called I Love Choker. It's a it's a huge event that we do every year in Carnival. But this year, you know, due to the COVID situation, the borders in Trinidad and Tobago is closed. So we are doing a lot of virtual events instead. So we could still reach out to our fans and the, 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 the fans of our music. And uh, yeah, so you know how virtual events could go, you know, it's because it's pre-recorded, we tend to um, take longer, so to speak. So I was cut to be on stage at 8 to 8.30 and then head out to come back home in time to do this event with you. But unfortunately, you know, you know how um, virtual events could be. And uh, it, it was a huge delay there. And, you know, so, but you know, we still here. <laughs> and I appreciate you. We so much appreciate I, you. I, I thank you for your patience. You know, no, it's, it's that's a crazy quite time. Right. That's quite all right. I penciled you in to say, I can't wait to sit down and talk to this gentleman. You know, you're an inspiration to millions um, on our topic tonight. The three reasons why I never gave up. Now, Robbie, where, when did you get your start? How old were you when you first started um, into music? I started at the age of 13 because um, my dad and my uncle had a band, in, you know, and um, it, it, it was a Bollywood band. And I would be right there every night after I do my homework. I would I would hustle my homework after school to just to get the opportunity to go into the band room to see my my dad and my uncle and his their band play Bollywood music. And I started there. Then I started to like hook the hook up the music, you know, like the wiring and stuff. And then eventually I started to sing. And then it was like, yo, this guy have a he has a good voice and. That is how it all started. And I started to sing like probably like two songs, a gig like that. And eventually um, my brother was part of that band as well. And he used to be like the, the programming guy, you know, like to do the rhythms and everything like that. And eventually he got married and got a job. And all of a sudden there was a huge opening for me and a gap and it's like, yo Ravi, we need you to try to get the, cause technology was changing, you know, with, with, with the Ark Island and the drum machines and whatnot. And I started to produce. And that is how I ended up becoming a singer slash producer without even knowing it, you know? And by the time I was like uh, 18, 19, we decided to form our own band because I, we didn't want it to interfere with the brand of my father's and my uncle's band. We, want, we wanted to venture into diff different things like soca, reggae, and chutney. And that is why we came up with, with my band, Karma. Now, your dad and your uncle were performers as well? Yes. My dad was a bassist and a singer. 
my uncle was one of the best Bollywood keyboardists out of Trinidad and Tobago. And, you know, but unfortunately, my dad is no longer around. And, you know, with, with all that being said, you know, that we end up, we ended up doing our own thing because we really wanted to venture into different types of music like reggae, soca, and, you know, chutney soca. So now, um, your sound, your sound is wonderful, first of all. Um, it puts you in that soothing, want to relax, and it tells a lot of stories as well on your music. Now, tell us a little bit about, first of all, when did you have your first hit, and when did you know it was a hit? How old were you? Well, that was in 2007. And um, I don't know, I did that song. It's called Kelly Statma. <laughs> it's like a Bacchanal song. And um, it started to go viral. Well, in, back in those days, there weren't really social media. What we had was like uh, the TV station started to play it, started um, playing it over and over and over. And people started to find, they started liking the song and the, the, to inquire about me. And then that was my first hit. And then eventually I went to like Ramos Malava and the other songs. Now, um, how, were, how old were you back then in 2007? And how were you able to handle your newfound fame? Back in 2007, uh, I would probably be like, let's see. Uh, about 25. About 25, yeah, about 25. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden now, the ladies are chasing you, the money's coming in, and you have a hit song. At 25, how were you able to handle that? It was fun because, you know, my brother was handling the business part of the band, so all I really had to do was sing and create music. And that's what I love to do. You know, like I love, I love creating music. I love singing. I like performing on stages. And we started to tour. And, you know, we, we, we started doing tours in Guyana, Suriname, the Caribbean, uh, North America, Europe, uh, like places like Holland, Spain. And it was so cool, you know, like, and I just wanted to do more of it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, after making the hit songs and things coming along, you've um, become now an icon to people as well as a celebrity and just a lot of things to people. Now, how have you been able to uh, keep yourself grounded and being able to stay humble in the midst of all your success for the last 14 years? Um, family. You know, my family's always with me. My mom is always around me, my brother, my sister. You know, I have two sisters and one brother. They always keep me grounded. My manager always keeps me grounded. We are like one really happy family. You know, I think family is, is very important. And I don't do music for anything else but passion because I really have a I really have a passion for music. I just love creating music. I'm like a kid in Candyland when it comes to music. <laughs> that is what it is, really. You know, so like I don't really let the fame and the popularity get to me. It's more like about me just wanted to produce more music and more music and more music. And the better I get at it, the happier it makes me. It doesn't, it, and when you're doing what you love, it doesn't feel like you worked a day in your life, does it? Exactly, right? Like doing a job that you actually like is not a job. It's, it's, it's fun. It's having, it's having a time, as you would see in Trinidad. So now in, in Trinidad, um, the, the market now, for example, um, I was looking at you, your impressive resume. Now, you made a distinction that you're an Indian Caribbean guy. Now, what is it, the difference between being an Indian on an island opposed to like African-American or so? Is it adjustment? Is it just the same? What is the difference? It's basically the same. It's just that we came, we came from India. Uh, my, forefather, my forefathers came um, on, they came from India to Trinidad to work. And that was back like in, like in the, in the 1800s, you know, and uh, they worked the sugar cane land and that is where they developed. Um, Chati Soka came from folk singing. And that's really, really about it is that thing what really separates Indian from Africans is our cultures, but our cultures are so unique and, and it's, it, over the years merging together. I always see that Trinidadian people, we are one. We, it, there's, there's nothing like Africans and Indians. We, 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 we just see that um, East Indian background because we came from India versus Africans came from Africa. But we are all Trinidadians because we, we our forefathers, they came from, from several different places, but we were born here. So regardless of what it is, we share the same culture, the same foods, the same vibe, the same carnival, the same type of music. It also is just one love, you know? That's beautiful. Now, um, 
Rob, now, for those who just tuning in, we are speaking to Ravi B. He is the celebrity artist. Um, he's a hit maker from Trinidad. He just joined the Gerard Show. Um, all of his videos go viral. He first had his big hit in 2007, and he'll be talking a bit about that. We will be taking your questions momentarily. I know you have tons of questions for this gentleman and scholar who has stayed up late to be on the Sherrard Show. Now, Ravi, um, when it comes to music, are you the gifted one that can just um, it comes in your head, the full song, and you can just go to the studio and do it? Or do you sit down and write until it comes fully to you? I think it's more about it's coming to my head. Like I will just get like a rush of uh, ideas in my head and I will actually hear everything right here. And just being, I think that's one of the, one of the, it's a privilege to have such a talent that I could actually take it. What I'm hearing in my head, what I'm seeing in my head, write it and actually do the music in in a studio for myself and so i get to hear exactly what i'm hearing in my head and that is what i do most of the times so now your songs. let's talk about a couple of your songs now let's start with my favorite uh start over now is that something more personal or is that something that's just uh giving somebody some inspiration tell me your inspiration behind start over start over basically was uh okay so we went to tobago i i went me and me and my guys a couple of us decided to make a boys line. I don't know if, if you know what that is. I boys do. line, a, a whole set of guys. We're going to Bago. There's gonna be and trouble. I was, and I was, <laughs> I was sitting there, um, right, right by, right by the Boko Reef, uh, with some of them. And one of the guys in the group were having a conversation with his girlfriend on the phone, and she, clearly she, 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 she was pissing them off, right? <laughs> and. I started, I just watched that and I started to write um, because I think she wanted to literally break, break up with him because she he went on a boy's trip with us. Oh, okay. And that is why I started to write it and it's like, and I started to formulate everything and then, you know, and that is where it come from. Most of my ideas come from reality and what is happening in society presently. And I think I love writing on society. I can tell. That's a beautiful one. Now, what about the song Deal With That? Now, that's, that video is playing right now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what about that one? What was the inspiration between that? It sounds like someone uh, just tired of um, being told what to do or not to do. Just deal with it. Now, what's it all about? It's actually It, it actually came up while, I, while the COVID situation was happening. Um, we were on tour um, in, on February 29th, and then... The, the, the next weekend, we were scheduled to be in Miami, the full band for a concert. And then COVID happened. And then all, all the, uh, the districts started shutting down. And then like our show had to cancel. And then the band went back to Trinidad. But I stayed back in Florida by my sister. And because I, I felt like carnival was just over in Trinidad. And I was like, you know what? this could actually be like my once in a lifetime opportunity to have a break about maybe three weeks or whatnot. So I said I'm going to spend three weeks not knowing that it's going to turn into six and seven months coming up to present time. And I remember writing the song because this song was really inspired by COVID, you know, um, people on a lockdown and they're frustrated and whatnot. And it was like kind of like me giving them hope. If you listen to the verses, it's me giving them hope and reminding them that we have to prepare for rainy days, but I still had a party swing to it. Now, like anywhere you go, we could crack a seal and deal with that. You know, crack a seal as in crack a bottle of rum mm -hmm. and deal with it, you know, but just kind of be constructive at the same time. I just wanted to kind of do something. I chucked me. Like I said, I like to write on society and what is happening in present time. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do something, a kind of party song for people in COVID um, hanging out home kind of way. Now, now, how have you been able to deal with the COVID? You still been able to get in, out and about, or are you just it inspire you to write more music being inside? Well, when COVID happened, well, when I say happened, I meant like I meant like in March last year when it really hit America. I was in Fort Lauderdale, and um, I ended up spending six months there, and I really took that time. You know, we couldn't really do anything, you know, so I took that time to do more reading and. Uh, go deeper into my studio work, like checking out new plugins and different things that makes audio songs great. And I also did a lot of planning for what is to come. I started writing a lot of songs and everything like that. So that was basically what I've been doing. But then like in September, I got um, clearance to come back home to Trinidad because different companies 
wanted to do different events, like one of them being a Diwali celebration live on television. Uh, so I came back home in time for that. And, um, you know, we started doing virtual concerts and that was the whole virtual thing happened for Karma. And then after that concert, everybody wanted to see more of, of Karma live virtually. And yeah, that's what we have been doing ever since. So now, um, Robin, you know, you have a lot of this, my lines are blowing up now with so many questions and comments. I want to ask you about one more song and then we'll start taking the questions for the fans. We see you out there. We see you. Now, what about the song Headshot, which is playing right now? Tell us a little bit about, um, now in Chicago, when you say Headshot, <laughs> that means you better duck because something is coming towards your head. What is this uh, inspiration behind this song? No, well, actually Headshot is actually a drink. Like actually you're taking the bottle of rum and it turns so. In Trinidad, we call it a headshot. Basically, gotcha. you take champagne. It's like champagne, alcohol. It's nothing else. I know some people was like, well, what's the headshot about? Is it like violent or anything like that? No, it's not violent. It means taking up straight from the bottle. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Um, again, one of my very favorite songs as well. I love it now that I know what it is even more so. <laughs> That's great. Now, now, Ravi, um, what is next for you? Are you going to be in films? Are you going to be on movies? What are some of the other things you're going to do besides music? Oh, man, I love acting. I love acting. When you get a chance, check out my TikToks, Ravi B. Karma, and you'll see some of the acting that I do. But yeah, definitely one of the things I really want to do, apart from music, is acting in a movie. So, um presently working on that and hope i'm hoping for the best okay good you, are you up for some questions you're up for some questions that? you might see me on netflix, hopefully a netflix movie or something <laughs> oh that'd be beautiful that'd be a beautiful um are you up for some questions now robbie from your fans sure no problem Okay, great. All right, this question is from Sarah. She's from Wisconsin. She said, Ravi, I love your music. You have been doing big things. I've been enjoying you since 2007, she says. And her question to you is, once the COVID is over, are you going to do an American tour? Yes. I need to get out of Trinidad. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, have, I have, yes, I have promoters on standby right now. As soon as COVID is over in terms of vac vaccinations and uh, we have the clearance to go back to normal life. Yes, I'm going to do a major tour in America and Europe. Very good, very good. We thank you for your question. Now, this question is from Weepy, from Weepy from Utah. Weepy says, I'm a huge fan of your music. Cool shirt. Yeah, that is a nice shirt he has on. He loves your shirt. <laughs> and he's, thank he's you. on his, uh, his, his, his guns as well. His question to you is, of all the songs you've written, which one really hits home um, that's really personal to you? Oh man, so many songs, you know. Um, which one really hits home? Hmm. Now that you ask it in that way, um, hmm. See, most of my songs is about partying, so most of them would be like hitting home. But one of my favorite songs would have to be Prescription. Doctor, give me a prescription. Bottle money to bottle money. And one of the reasons why it's one of my personal favorites, because I think I had one of the most successful years that year in 2013 because of that song. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Very good question. We appreciate it, Weepy. Now, this one is from Mark. This is from Mark from Idaho. His, his question to you, first of all, congratulations to you for your longevity in the music industry. His question to you is, what is the secret to longevity when most people can't even do one year, you've done 14 years of success. What's your secret? I don't know. I just, I just think it's passion, man. Um, and being able to foresee what's coming, you know, like, um, again, and rewriting on, on what is happening now. Um, a lot of writers and um, producers will tend to write on what they like, but I like to write on about what people likes. So I think that's one of these secret formulas is you just have to see what's happening in society and kind of try to foresee what where it's going and kind of try to write people write happy songs and like songs that people like, people don't like to party to, like the vibes, you know, like make you want to just pump, you know. And that's what <laughs> I've been doing over the last 14 years. It's like just trying to do songs on society that makes people happy. Well, apparently it's working, Robbie, because you are number one artist in Trinidad and you're doing major, major things. So apparently so. we got time for two more questions. Um, this question is from Mia. Um, she is from Seattle. She says she loves your sound, loves your music. The hair is way cool. Her question <laughs> to you is, is the music industry dis different in Trinidad than it is in America? 
Yes, it is very different. I feel like um, America, because if the um, the amount of people available to the music there, um, you tend to get a broader market versus Trinidad. Uh, Trinidadians, like, they love our music. They're very supportive. Um, but they are so in, inclined with so many different types of music, you know, like American music, European music, like even Korean music. Uh, we are listening to Jamaican music, you know? So we have to share all of that with the little bit of people we have in Trinidad and Tobago versus the United States. There's like millions of people. So like, even like when, if if I had to release a song globally in America, starting in America, I think that it'll reach way more people and there'll be more, what much more vibes and hype around it. So yeah, I think it's definitely different. Oh, wow. Okay. Very good. Now, um, this last question. Okay. This last question is from Alan, Alan Kelly, and he is from Texas, Dallas, Texas. He says, I'm a huge fan of yours. Thank you for <laughs> being on the Sherrod show. We really appreciate that. His question um, to you is, why did you say you have to get out of Trinidad? Is it the island feel is getting to you or you want to broaden your horizons? Good question, Alan. Well, um, the thing is, when, like I said, when COVID happened, I was I was in Fort Lauderdale in Florida for six months. And, you know, I really got accustomed to that environment. And then I came home in September. And, um, you know, it, things are really limited here because the borders are closed and we are restricted to the beaches, um, to the rivers. Um, this, the, the, the theaters are closed. There isn't anything going on in terms of entertainment because you know, we are really taking it serious, which I commend the government for. But, you know, as a human being, it's it's not what I'm accustomed to, you know, and I, I, I speak for everybody in Trinidad and Tobago. And I see this with most respect to how the government is handling COVID. I understand that COVID is a situation that we have to deal with and it's beyond our, it's beyond what we are accustomed to. Um, but it's, for me, being an artist, especially being here, in Trinidad and Tobago in January and February, where carnival is supposed to be happening and there isn't any carnival. So personally, it's for me, I just want to get out, you know, because we can't really do anything. By 10 o'clock in the night here in Trinidad, there's nothing to do. There's no restaurants open, nothing happening. Oh, you wow. Know? So, and for me, not just coming from a, a six month uh, stay in the United States, going to Orlando, going to Key, um, the Keys going to all different Atlanta, we just traveling every weekend. It's really hard for me, you know, to just be here and there's nothing happening after 10 o'clock in the night. And during the day, the beaches are closed at some point. Um, there isn't any, any, any entertainment, so to speak. So that's just me personally, but Trinidad is a beautiful country still. Um, we are handling COVID uh, in a great way. Uh, the beaches, don't get me wrong, the beaches are open, but it's it's open up to six o'clock in the day, you know, and rivers are closed. Uh, restaurants are closed at some point. They're they are open up to like 10 in the night. Uh, you know, so I, there's a lot of restrictions basically in Trinidad and, and it's hard for me to be here right now when there's no carnival. It's just crazy, man. Well, as soon as um it clears up, definitely make sure you stop by the Sherrard Show. We're going to have you perform live on the show in Los oh, Angeles when you definitely, definitely um are able to get out because we'd love to have you. Now, what's next for you? Um, what is it? What can where can your fans be able to? The new fans that are watching now, the millions of people, where can they purchase your music? Um, get an autograph, a copy of your album or your CD. Where can it be? Oh, you could get all my stuff on um digitally on all platforms itunes spotify you name it just go to whatever platform you're following you're gonna get rafi b music just type in rafi b all my songs is gonna come up from the latest go right back okay everybody you can look right on your screen and see where you can purchase it now uh ravi one thing and i'll let you out of here i know you're a very busy man give me three reasons why for our audience why you never gave up even when you had times that you wanted to give up reason number one reason number one I love music and I just love the band vibes. I like I like my band so much. Uh, by the way, guys, I have a band. It's called Karma. And I've been born into, into live music. I love live music. I love the drums. I love the bass. I love the guitars. And I love having a team of guys that is so good at what they do. And when we don't perform live, 
like seeing the expression on people's faces and say, oh my God, you guys sound so great. Uh, I love that. That is one of the reasons I never give up. Second reason I never give up is because of my, my parents, my mom always pushing me and, and it was one of my dad's last dream before he died to like, Ravi, I need you to carry on our name through music, you know? And a third reason, um, I just love seeing people happy, you know, like, yo, the most amazing feeling is when you're performing a song on stage, seeing thousands of people that are singing your song word for word. It's like, wow, it's, it's something that I could never explain. And those are probably the three reasons why I would never give up. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, and that's very inspirational. I am also not only a television host, but also a musician as well. And other times when oh, you've cool. written those songs alone, but you see millions performing or you see millions singing along with you, it's so touching. Um, and that's just how I feel, especially for the Sherrard show when I just um, came up with a show 10 years ago, just to hear fascinating stories and you see some of the biggest names in the industry being a part of the show. That's very humbling, such as yourself. So I thank God so much for it. And Ravi, I thank you for taking your evening out to be a part of the Sherrard show. Um, I appreciate it. I hope you will come back this next time in the studio. And is there any final words for your fans? Of course. Um, to my fans, I just want to say thank you to, for supporting my music um, online. I mean, online is like our only hope right now. Uh, but um, thank you for supporting our music, man. Not only my music, but Soka, uh, Chutney Soka, Reggae from the Caribbean. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, you guys out there are doing your thing and really supporting us and we are all working together to make caribbean music to the billboards you know so to speak and um i love you guys so much and thank you for always supporting me to you bro i appreciate you having me on this show it really me it really meant a lot to me again i apologize for the late start because of the virtual concert before i end up running late but thank you for for your patience and i really really appreciate you bro for having me on the show you're very welcome, Ravi. And this man has a humble spirit. Two, 3,000 miles away, you can feel his warmth and sincerity. We really appreciate it. You can be a guest on the Sherrod Show anytime. And ladies and gentlemen, on our next episode of the Sherrod Show, we will have the Commodores. The Commodores will be on the Sherrod Show, so we're looking forward to having them on. If you don't know their music, you better look it up, because I'm going to quiz you on it. In the meantime, check out the Sherrod Show on Essence Television, iHeartRadio, as well as on coming soon on iOS and Android. I'm Sherrod. In the meantime, have a good night. See you next time. Bye-bye now. But oh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Take care, brother.